Good morning and happy Memorial Day. Um, yeah, it's this lovely allergy stuff that gets me. So I have a little bit of gravel today, more than usual. A little more raspiness due to the humidity. But we're going to carry on. Um, today, I w thought I would go over some places where you can donate finished items. And um, the reason that I chose to do that today is, one, Memorial Day. We always think of those that were lost in battle and pay honor to those who sacrificed their lives. But they also have family that continue to live and can benefit from some of the things that we create and we don't know what to do with because we don't have people who are what I call knit worthy, crochet worthy, quilt worthy in families, friends, those kind of things because you know they're just going to toss them off to the side, never use them, they're not thrilled about them, you know. They're not as thrilled about them as you are giving them. Um, that doesn't happen in all families, friends. But some of us have some of those folks that are like, Oh, thank you. And you know they're never going to use it. I'll give you an example. My niece. I know when I make her a shawl, a scarf, a wrap, um, she's going to use it. She loves them. Um, she generally will use them, you know, around the house. She'll even uh, take them into the school where she teaches. And uh, she'll wear the scarves out to different um, activities, those kind of things she does. And, of course, I try to make sure that most of them are in her favorite color, red. Although I do, I'm giving her some different colors, you know, here and there. But... I know that an afghan is not something that she is interested in, so I will not make her an afghan. Quilts? Yes. Um, my mother-in-law. She's fine if you're making placemats or wall hangings, but if I were to make her an afghan, lapgan, or a quilt for her to use over her lap in the living room, whatever, she wouldn't use it. She just wouldn't have it because it wouldn't look good, you know, if others stopped by and saw it. Um, that's just the way my mother-in-law is. I know that, so I'll make placemats, I'll make wall hangings, you know, for different seasons of the year, those kind of things for her. And that's fine. She'll use wreaths on the door, around the house, those kind of things, but she's She's primarily not the kind of person that will have an afghan or a lap robe laying around. Um, she had worked at a company in North Carolina called Technical Precision. And the owner had gone to Ireland and had gotten her this beautiful afghan. Now, he loves my mother-in-law. They remember her at birthday, Christmas, and every year when they have the rewards... They invite her to them, even though she's been retired now, maybe 10 years. Um, but they still, you know, remember her, send her things, drop by, bring her gifts, those kind of things. So, I saw it that day. I've not seen it since. So, you know, I know she doesn't use it. Because it's not anywhere accessible. It's just something she's not into. And that's fine. You know, we all have those kind of people in our lives. So, the first thing I'm going to tell you is when you finish making items, think about where you might want to donate them locally. And the reason I say locally is because a lot of people don't think local. They think they need to send it out to Red Cross or they need to send it out to so-and-so or this kind of thing. And those places are fine. 
However, these are some places you could think about that are in your neighborhood. Do you have a habitat for humanity? They might very well appreciate Afghans so that when they finish a home for a family, they can present them with an Afghan to go into their living room on their couch, whatever. Hats, gloves, mittens, scarves. The family may generally be in need. That's generally what Habitat for Humanity is. It's for people who are down on their luck and need some assist. You know, ask if you have a group locally that does that. Ask if there are any needs that you might be able to fulfill. Now, Habitat for Humanity, if you're making lots of hats and scarves, and I'm going to say this as just a, because of where I have done this before, generally it's, I will donate 50, 60 to 100 hats and scarves, have them bagged up together, and Habitat for Humanity sometimes will pick them up for you, so you don't have to go and deliver them. Not always, but sometimes. Look in your area for nursing homes, schools, hospitals near you. When you're looking at nursing home, hospitals, and um, hospices, um, Alzheimer's homes, those kind of things, generally there is someone who is in charge of activities. Um, it's not always activities, but if you just call and say, I have some things that, you know, I would like to donate, like scarves, hats, lap robes, those kind of things. Is there anything, you know, that you need that you can use? And generally, they will tell you yes and tell you what they need. Now, the nursing home, you know, I talked about making the catheter bags. I make the catheter bags. I had someone give me a bag of crocheted bags. There were about 20 bags in there and I thought, well, I'm just going to take them in and ask if they can use those. They were thrilled to have those um, because the ladies that come through enjoy having those little bags put their little um, things in to carry them around, those kind of things. Um, schools. I had a friend, she's retired, but she was a secretary at the school. She said, you have no idea how many kids do not have appropriate winter wear. And she says, you just want to be able to give them a hat and a scarf, mittens. And she said, but, um, you know, she couldn't afford to do that all on her own, although she did that quite often. She would buy, bat, you know, bunches of hats, mittens, scarves, where she could, whenever she could. And when a kid came in, and it's winter, and all they've got on is this little thin hoodie, and they're cold, and you know, you know the kids that are in need when you're working at a school. So, um, and of course that goes along with Billy's Hats for Kids. That's a great way to donate hats and scarves, those kind of things. Also, daycares. You know, we all, we never think about daycares because parents are paying for those. But I can tell you the amount of times that I have taken in small hats, scarves for the kids at daycares, the daycares are extremely happy to get those kind of things for the kids. Send them home with them. Head Start. Head Start often, they have a lot of needs. I'm going to tell you some of the things that we've done for Head Start. They quite often will call us and tell us with the quilters, we need quilts for the kids, and we do this every couple of years. We do this for quilts for the kids, or they're calling, they say, we need quilts in the baby's room. You know, we make quilts and send them on over. They came to us one year and they said, we have a room that is, make, is mainly designed for, people, for children that have physical disabilities um, and we would like some teaching toys for them. 
can you make us some dolls? So I sat down with the lady and I said, okay, tell me this. Do you have anyone that is deaf? Yes. Are there any kids there with tube feedings? Yes. Wheelchairs? Yes. Are there any children that are in the room that um, wear the really thick glasses, you know, to be seen? Yes. We went through this thing. We as a group figured out a way to make just plain dolls out of muslin, um, sewing yarn hair on their heads. Um, I have the embroidery machine, so I embroidered eyes for all the dolls and a mouth and a little nose, you know, onto the faces. And um, we put those dolls together. I found, um, I had a friend who just happened to have an old G-tube set. It had not been used, it was used for training purposes. And I said to her, what are you going to do with that? She said, well, I'm going to just throw it away. I said, I can use that. So we created a doll who has a G-tube feeding. And found the wheelchair, had a friend in Roanoke, Virginia. Um, there was a gentleman there that used to make a lot of wheelchair um, for dolls, for kids who are in wheelchairs. I had called and asked if he had any wheelchairs. He said, no, I've stopped making those. You know, I've reached an age, I can't continue. And he said to me, but let me see. I think I have someone who was wanting to sell one. Um, they were going to put it on eBay. And I said, well, I'll buy it. He got in contact with that person. They said, no, you're using it for a good deal. You know, a good deed. I'm going to ship it to you. So they shipped me this small little wheelchair, you know, to put the rag doll in um, for the handicapped, you know, those that had hearing aids. We used poppy paint. And right around an area, we drew hearing aids. Um, some of the dolls had little headbands because some of the kids have Baja hearings. So we, you know, simulated making those, those kind of things. Loved it. Now, we also made little outfits for all these. Some of them were crocheted, some of them were knitted, some of them were sewn. And these kids use these every day. And I'm told that they're getting to a point where they're getting pretty ratty. They might need another root, another group of them. So, yeah, but that, that has been fun. Homeless shelters. Food banks. Check with these people. Check with counseling centers. You know, you've got a phone. Use it. Call first. Don't, don't just head in. Now, almost every area has a um, American Cancer Center office to where you can go in and get information, those kind of things. A lot of people don't know that they will take the chemo caps and scarves there. Now, I generally wait until September, October um, to deliver those um, because they don't really need them year-round. Although they will take them if you're making some um, caps and hats for summer, scarves, do-rags, those kind of things during the summer. Um, some of the ladies do enjoy those. And generally we just take them directly to the Cancer Society. They will, they will place a hat in the bags that they hand out um, when the women start their, women and men, when they start radiation therapy, chemotherapy, so that they have them ready to go and they can just hand them out. Um, that's a great place to start with. There are a lot of other places that we don't think about. And I'm going to... This is one that's, that I love. You know, I've told you about the Snuggles Project where you can crochet, knit the small blankets, send off for the animals, those kind of things. Now this goes along the lines of that. There is a group on Facebook called Cats for Ma 
uh, mats for cats. Now, these mats are basically a quilted um, placemat. And they're used to put into the bottom of the uh, little kennel cages, whatever, or the carriers for the animals that come in. We know there's been a lot of flooding, a lot of tornadoes lately. Uh, mats for cats, many times. They will list the shelters that have a call or a need for those. And you can ship them out if you want to. Um, you know, they will also take the crochet, the knitted, those kind of things. Because many times some of these animals are displaced because they can't go into shelters. So they're put into um, animal shelters. And, you know, sometimes they lose their forever home because of whatever. But those items are really needed this time of year. And like I said, Mats for Cats, the gal that runs that group on Facebook, is really good about giving listings of different places. You may find one that's near to you um, where you can send some items like that. And the good thing with that is it doesn't have to be pretty. Um, you know, you can use every little ball scrap you have um, for crocheting, knitting. You can use all your scraps for quilting. I generally, if I have a little bit of strip, I don't care if it's, you know, a half inch, two inch, three inch, you know, whatever. Um, I use the old um, kitty litter containers, you know, where we get the kitty litter. Clean those out and I've got, you know, just scraps tucked in there because I also do applique. And sometimes those scraps come in handy. When I know there is a need or I don't have projects already planned, quilts that I'm making, I will sit down and I will just make a bunch of mats, set them off to the side so that I know, you know, when I see that request on that Facebook page, I know I have 10 that I can send out or whatever. And many times they'll fit in those envelopes that you get at the Dollar Tree that are what? Ten and a half by fifteen and a half. If you fold it just right and seal it just right, it'll go in that. So, you know, those are some great places to donate. Now, I'm going to tell you some of these other places. I have a list. But there are a couple of spots where these places are listed. And then you go to their website and you can get the place that's local to you, like Project Linus. Um, they will take quilted, crocheted, knitted blankets, those kind of things. Um, but lots of times you may have a local drop-off point that you can drop those off. Uh, in Williamsport, the place you dropped them off at was a, uh, like a shipping center for businesses. And they collected them there. Now it's moved, you know, those kind of things happen. But here are some ideas to think about. Your scarves, your hats, your goodies, they can do a lot of good. There's Project Linus. Now someone had mentioned March of Dimes. I don't know that March of Dimes still does it, but when my daughter was little, they did take baby items. Um, so that they could present them to the babies in the hospitals or children that were having surgeries, those kind of things. Um, there is projectnightnight.org. Um, their main thing is a book, a stuffy, or a lovey, and uh, I think a pair of pajamas or a pillowcase. Um, don't quote me on that. I can't remember them all, but I think that's what they, um, you know, they advocate sending out, giving out to kids. Um, Binky Patrol, another great place. This one is one of my favorites. It is fc2success.org. 
it is primarily for those students that have gotten successful and been able to make it to college or maybe they're low income or not even low income they may be out of, from out of the country you know they were accepted in, in a student transfer program so that they can come in they do something that is they have a program called the red scarf program for students at college and some of those things you know that they promote for you to send cookies personal items they can be samples or whatever those kind of things to send a box to a student that's at college that may have no one you know as a contact or you know the family can't afford a lot of things but it's basically to continue help them continue in their success at college because sometimes kids at college drop out because the cost of just the other parts of the living you know the shampoos those kind of things um, can get uh, expensive but it's a great it's a great um, idea and I love that this next one is sunshine international blankets of love they do a lot of blankets and shawls and um, it it's a great organization bundles of love those are items for babies knitting rays of hope for babies in needs Operation Gratitude. Those of you that watch Crystal uh, back of day, this is a this is a group that she um, used in her um, what do you call that <laughs> retreat <laughs> that she had going on there. And they do hats and scarves for troops. Then there's the ships project. There are a lot of different items. I've done for the ships project I've worked with that group for many years since 19 1999 2000 when they first started maybe and then we were just making slippers for the soldiers that were on the ships because it's cold you know because everything is run nuclear those kind of things so they keep it very very cool on the ship so we were making slippers so that when they were on board they would at least could keep their feet warm and we were using puffy paint on the bottom so that they would be um, non-skid those kind of things and hats and scarves so um, the ships project is great places shoulder soldiers angels is another great place some of the things that they like are prayer cloths um, pajama bottoms if you sew they really can use a lot of pajama bottoms for those soldiers that have returned home are veterans it's basically what this group is for but they will take other items as well um, quite a bit of list going on as you can tell we're up to 23 minutes knit your bit and this is for VA centers and hospitals now I have a woman that she crochets Afghans all years year long and generally when our knitting group was she would always ask for um, small balls of yarn for her gra granny squares and we used to always say they're Betty Balls because her name was Betty. So we would say, does anybody have a bunch of Betty Balls? And we'd collect them and get them out to Betty. So she had them for her um, crocheted afghans. She would take every year 50, 60 to the VA hospital just to hand out. Um, that's a great thing. There's Halos for Hope, chemo caps, Knots of Love, crochet for cancer the hat box foundation and of course knitted knockers feel better friends um, bridge and beyond that is for homeless um, they can use hats scarves mittens as well 
from you to you, as in E-W-E, to you. Um, they take a lot of those things. Handmade especially for you. Afghans for Afghans. Um, this is also another project that I think is worthy. Um, although you do have to send them to a central place to be shipped off. But, you know, if you can manage that, go for it. Um, knit a square. And I have to tell you, when I saw this knit a square, because they take a lot of granny squares, my first thought was Teresa Patton. She has all those squares, you know. Who knows what she's going to do with those, but she could do a good thing with that. Get one of those big envelopes, fill it up with granny squares of your scraps, send them off, somebody else puts them together, and they they go for good. There is Mother Bear Project. Mother Bear is one of my favorite projects. You knit or crochet a bear for kids who have HIV or AIDS in some of the third world countries. Um, Izzy dolls are along the same line, comfort dolls, but the knit a bear is primarily for those with HIV and AIDS. In the third world country, there is this myth that goes along that if a man has AIDS or HIV positive, if he has sex with a virgin, he will be cured. And of course, many times that results in a pregnancy. The baby is born, may have HIV, may have AIDS, or children contracted through, you know, poor sanitary conditions. Um, yes, I know it's sexually and also bloodborne, but there are many reasons it can be passed on to a child, not just by birth. But this gives them a bit of comfort and measure, um, you know, when they are diagnosed. Um, because all they see is it's an end of, the, end of their life. They see the people around them, their elders, that are suffering with these because they can't get a lot of drugs that we have in the U.S. that help slow the progression down. Um, you know, when I was working on an AIDS unit uh, back in the early 90s, I can tell you people were dying left and right. Um, now you have a lot of these newer drugs that come along. They help someone who has HIV or AIDS live a much long, longer and productive life. So. Um, the Mother Bear Project, I think, is a great one to do for kids. There's Wool Aid, Warm Up America, My Recovery Buddy, Friends of Pine Ridge Reservation. Now, with the Pine Ridge Reservation, I generally am more apt to send money to the group to use for school items that they may need rather than knitted crochet those kind of things <coughs> although the elders do appreciate the um, crochet knitted afghans but generally you can find a reservation within your state or around that will accept those as well Pine Ridge is one of the poorest um, Although they're also now one of the most well-known. Um, I have seen stories where they talk about clothing that was donated to them. And there are just piles of wasted clothing. And um, so I'm more apt to send money for school um, things. But they can still use those items. They have a list. They have a contact person that can tell you what they can use. The Snuggles Project for Animals and Comfort for Critters. Those are just a few that I found yesterday in about 20 minutes. Um, I am going to provide some links down below. And you will see that many of these um, 
couple of these links will be duplicates. They'll say 10 charities, 10 charities when you get to those web pages. The one page is very comprehensive, has a lot on the list. The one that I did not list was careware.org. Um, I have worked with careware.org since I think they first started, when I first heard about it. I received their newsletters every couple of months. It's a printed thing, and uh, Bernat uh, Your Inspirations provides a lot of, they will allow them to print the um, some of their patterns in there. Um, some of the ladies have come up with patterns to make clothing for um, children in the NICU. There is I noticed the other day there is a great little um, sweater that has snaps um, that can be used for NICU. Um, it's a knitted sweater and it uh, I saw that on Ravelry and so I've downloaded that pattern to use in my now repertoire for that. But when I started with Careware I was making fetal demise pouches. I was making a lot of gowns, um, t-shirts, those kind of things for babies that were in the NICU. Uh, simply because when I first started and I was in nursing school still, the very first day that we did our clinical rotation in labor and delivery, there were three fetal deaths. And every one of those parents wanted those children, but they had lost them. Now the hospital, they had a routine. They would give the parent a rose. They asked the parent if they wanted to spend some time with the baby. They would take a picture of the baby with them if they wanted, um, whatever. But they always wrapped the baby in those real big baby um, blankets that are, you know, normally used for normal size infants that are born. And I thought, this, that's no good. <laughs> so we had devised a method to make some, uh, some fetal demise pouches. The woman that was in charge, that's the main charge nurse for the NICU and the nursery there at the hospital, I was been friends with her for many years, and um, I had asked her, "Is there something you know I can make? I can sew whatever." We came up with a nice little square blanket made out of flannel um, that I could sew up, and they were smaller, so you know they could wrap the babies in those those kind of things. And I did that for many years, um, crocheted little bitty preemie blankets, those kind of things for them. Did that for many years. Um, and then I found Careware, um, probably 1994, 95 maybe, um, and they had this booklet, and in this booklet they had all these items that you can make, you know, it had patterns and suggestions, and I thought I'm going to send off for that booklet. At the time, the cost of the booklet was two dollars, donation to cover the cost of mailing out that booklet. It has since risen to five dollars because of the raising, you know, the cost. However, you do, you can enroll and every month you can get a newsletter and it's just a nice printed little uh, booklet that comes out that has pictures, tells you stories, updates, see you on new hospitals are listed. Careware has a list of hospitals and their needs on their website and it's careware.org and it is a great resource if you're looking for a hospital near you to send items to and the reason I say that is yesterday I thought for grins and giggles I'll look under Pennsylvania for the hospital in Williamsport well, I knew they took hats. We've been making hats for the babies for, what, a year and a half now? So I knew they took hats. 
but underneath there, there was a little blurb about shawls for the mothers who had lost their babies or, you know, their babies were transferred to the NICU. They would like to be able to not only send the baby with a gap, but send a shawl for that mother. Now, how come no one told me about the shawls? Not a single one of the nurses said anything to me about shawls. I mean, we could have been taking shawls down there left and right. So, um, you know, you'll find out things that you're like, wow, they take those. So, be a little proactive. Look in your own neighborhood first. Um, I am a big believer in taking care of those around you first, then moving outward if you can. Um, but like I said, if you, you know, do quilts, those kind of things, think about using your scraps. And, and they don't even have to be pretty scraps put together for those little mats for the cats and the puppies when they get uh, displaced due to natural disasters. So... This has wound up being pretty long. We're close to 40 minutes. Giving you a few ideas. Down below in the description box, there will be a link of several places where you can go and get more information about these different organizations if you'd like to donate to them, what their needs are, uh, those kind of things. So, now it's up to you to do the donating of your items that you finish that you just don't know what to do but you want to keep making okay everybody have a great memorial day and remember this is a day for those who sacrifice their lives it's not just about picnics take a moment to thank God or your spiritual higher power, whatever, and take a moment to think about those that have gone on, have passed for your countries. That's what Memorial Day is all about. It's not about the picnics. Um, this is also the time of the year that many of us do the missing man dinner. Basically, it's setting a place for someone who has lost their life serving their country. Um, it's just a little ritual. My husband and I have done it for many years. We continue to do that. Um, so, all right. I'm done. Have a great day. Bye.